The European Parliament has passed a resolution recommending the suspension of military aid and assistance to Egypt. And this comes in light of the alleged abduction, torture and killing of Italian doctoral student Giulio Regeni in Cairo. While the vote may carry weight among European Union member countries, the resolution is not binding. 28-year-old Regeni went missing on the 5th anniversary of the January 25th revolution in Cairo amid heightened security. The young researcher's body was found on a deserted road in early February, having been subjected to what was described as unacceptable violence. Well, let's get the latest now on this story. And uh, CCTV's Adel Mahrou is joining us live from Cairo. And Kevin Ozebek joins us from Brussels. Kevin, to you first. The motion to suspend military aid to Cairo is not binding for European Union member states. What's the likelihood that they will go ahead to implement the recommendations? Well, that's right. There's no real legal heft to this, and the 28 EU member states don't have to follow this emotion. But this does send quite a clear and loud message to Cairo. It's telling Cairo and General Sisi that European politicians are watching very closely what is happening in Egypt. It's telling Cairo that they are very concerned over the death of this young Italian man. And it's telling Cairo that Europe is very closely watching the situation in Egypt's prisons. Of course, there are widespread reports of torture happening inside uh, those those prisons and quite brutality behind bars there. So this does send quite a loud message to Cairo that uh, Europe may not be fully on board its actions in the future. Adel, how has this news though been received by the Egyptian government and generally by the Egyptian people? Well, um, overall, um, there hasn't been much of reaction so far. Egypt was quite busy all day long with a, a diplomatic uh, battle trying to win a vote for um, its candidate to lead the, um, the um, Arab League and a new vote for the Secretary General. Um, we tried to reach the Foreign uh, Ministry, but um, uh, they were not available to comment. But overall, um, some officials said to local news media that um, they're not alarmed because, as you said, um, the resolution is non-binding. And already Egypt has strong military military ties, uh, particularly with France, uh, who they've signed with um, s at, since President Sisi came to power, uh, around $5.6 billion of uh, arms deal between uh, both countries. Uh, and just even um, yesterday, uh, French uh, Foreign Minister uh, Jean-Marc Rowe was here in Egypt um, renewing um, so France's uh, support uh, to Egypt and the necessity, um, in his words, to support Egypt, uh, which is key to uh, limiting um, uh, terrorism uh, influence in the region, particularly in Libya. So it seems that the case remains as is. The, si the similar resolution was taken um, from the European Parliament in August 2013, and this is what um, today's uh, resolution renewed the reminder of what um, member states agreed on before but it seems that um, some Egyptian officials are not quite alarmed maybe uh, what's alarming is the sort of tone the firing words used against Egyptian human rights uh, states well Kevin though uh, what kind of outcome could the European Union uh, parliament be trying to get out of this motion to suspend military aid to Egypt well it's interesting that this particular motion had so much support in the European Parliament about 550 MEPs or members of the European Parliament supported this mo motion. Only 10 of them rejected it. So uh, quite substantial there when you look at the numbers, the voting numbers behind this motion. Uh, so obviously I think it's quite clear that uh, the European Parliament will continue to very closely watch what many would call a deteriorating situation, a deteriorating political situation in Cairo. There have been a number of uh, alleged abuses in Cairo lately and a number of abuses since the January revolution so it's something that now is definitely clearly on the radar here in Brussels well uh, finally though Adele uh, the resolution says that Regeni's killing should not be viewed as an isolated case but part of a systemic uh, problem that involves repression and abuse what kind of response though do we expect from authorities in Cairo to such assertions even though they haven't responded as yet to the actual uh, suspension the usual response from the Egyptian government is denial. They um, denied that um, there have been any youth who were um, abducted or kidnapped 
uh, by um, official uh, forces, um, uh, by security forces, sorry. Um, there have been some um, alarming reports about um, incidents happening, but so far Egypt has been always insisting that um, it, ha it doesn't have any uh, political detainees in um, its prisons. All those who are in prison are um, accused of criminal acts, and therefore um, this is the justification the Egyptian government and the Interior Ministry um, repeatedly use whenever this um, term is brought up. However, there are some cases about university students who uh, were um, suddenly disappeared from uh, either their educational uh, location or from their houses and then days later they were found or at least announced even sometimes by official military, official Egyptian uh, police reports that they were killed in a crossfire while attacking, uh, and I'm quoting them here, a terrorist cell. So it is quite um, um, a file that has a lot of questions about it. Uh, one of the um, Human Rights Research Center in Nadim Center uh, was trying to investigate one uh, of these cases and there have been some sort of um, um, uh, maybe legal uh, concerns from the government to, the, regarding the operation of such centers and it was threatened um, to shut down. So overall this is something that Egypt has been trying to defend itself for, from for a long time and it seemed with what we've heard the European Parliament today saying uh, was such a sweeping vote as well is that it will keep on such a defensive um, act or defensive position for um, maybe months to come. Right, uh, Adel Mahroui and Kevin Ozebek in uh, Brussels to you both. Uh, thank you.